Hello everybody and welcome back for another replay of a 1v1 in a Dane. Today I've got a matchup for you which is Lorien, played by myself, versus Mordor, played by Dud. Now you'll see in this match that Dud has a very specific Mordor strategy and we'll see that develop over the game and it can be very dangerous if not counted correctly. Uh, but first of all, this time I'm in the top left corner and you see I'm playing Lorien. I don't actually go for any of the inside farms where the Lorien, far the Lorien buildings sorry, are both production buildings and farms. They produce resources and they produce units. They are therefore quite a bit more expensive than all other factions. And I do actually recommend going for one anyway, just to get those troops out. But as you see, I go for a slightly different tactic in this game. And I've instantly gone for the heroes. We've got, let me, if I just remember his name, Orofin here on the sword. And his brother Rumil on the bow. I'm using um, Orofin. I'm going to get them mixed up so many times. Over here to grab a farm. And let's see what I go for. A Bjorning house. This is the exact reason why I didn't go for an inside farm and I will explain very shortly why I go for a Bjorn house. I don't really recommend this if you're playing a standard game because it is quite risky but you'll see why I go for it in a, in a minute. Here's his brother creeping the troll. Uh, this is mainly because I'm not going to be getting pikes out so um, I'll have to use my starter units here to creep that troll. So I have creeped the wildman here and I've got this farm. Now let's go over to see what does doing. He's gone for a classic orc barracks start and he's actually gone for an inside building which as I said in the previous video uh, I don't actually like it particularly myself to go for an inside building just because they're so early just because they are so expensive but as you see in this match it does actually work out pretty well for him. In the meantime he scouted he's sorry he's creeped his troll and I don't think he's actually got Gorbag out so as you see very effective creeping there just using two swordsmen and it is possible to do this I will probably be showing it in a how to ordain video on really how to creep a troll even with just two units or even with one unit of swords it is possible to creep a troll so in the meantime here we are um, destroying this troll and I've got this wildman pit I've got two farms out and let's have a look at the Bjorning house very soon I will have my first Bjorning out and as you see this is so good against the strategy that Dud uses he's gone for a second inside farm in the meantime he's going for his outside farm so a little late on those outside farms I personally would have rather got those two outside farms not taken this but as I said he didn't get his scout hero so really he needed his two starter units to creep that troll in the meantime I've killed my troll I'm creeping it so I've done a bit of a mix whereas last time I focused primarily on the flanks I've done a bit of a mix I've captured these two wildmen as you see Dud has not captured his two wildmen he's gone straight for the middle but I have also myself gone for the middle and it looks like Dud isn't going to try and um, steal my trolls and here we go I've got the first Bjorning out, I've instantly turned him into bear form and you'll see exactly why. I have put him on defensive stance. This is extremely important if you're going to use Bjorns against Mordor or Bjorns against any, th any swords really. They need to be on defensive because look at this, even trampling Wildman, you see it's not a lot but I mean that's about two tramples and some of his health is already quite um, significantly down and there we go the first significant of the video the last video I said significantly more times than I've ever said it before in my life and I will be trying to avoid it in the meantime I've got a second Bjorning out already and the third one is on its way so really I'm trying to take the fight to the enemy here and as you see I've got Rumil here and actually I'm just scouting here so let's have a look at my vision I don't know where his orcs are now he's got orcs up here creeping but I don't know that and actually I'm trying to look for them with the bears here as well so you know people sometimes don't use scout heroes for scouting and in certain situations they are better at fighting and creeping but I felt that I really needed to scout here so I've seen all of this you can see the gray areas are the things that in, in live play you can't actually see at all we hear the third Bjorning come out he will turn into a bear, bear very soon and I'm actually having a look now to see um, where the rest of his orcs are Thanks to um, a bit of scouting from Rumul, I've found these orcs here. I'm able to trample them. And now let's talk a little bit. You see, this is on defensive as well. Let's talk a little bit about Bjornings versus orcs. Look at this. One trample and they're instantly dead. This is on defensive mode. And you see that knockback? That would have been more advantageous for me to put him in um, the battle stance, the one up uh, towards aggressive, um, because that would have killed them with the knockback. But nevertheless, I am looking for the trample here. You see that they are quite low on health here, these Bjorns. They do suffer a lot of trample revenge, even from swords, but 
uh, they compensate for that for such high trample damage themselves, and there goes Rumil. That was quite a mistake by me, but he did do his job. He did scout quite a bit. I would have much preferred to keep him alive and seek these Bjornings that are nearly on half health already. But if I can get rid of these Orcs, it's going to be very significant for me. And there we go. I just said it again. Stop saying significant. Anyway, moving on. He's gone for some Archers, as Dimitri did in his previous game. And three orc pits out already, and you see he's queued up almost 60 orcs. This really is does strategy. I've killed enough orcs to get three power points, and I've gone for Tauriel, and my aim was to focus these pikes. A bit of a mis uh, micromanagement there. I didn't aim for the pikes, to, sorry, for the archers until they were running away, but I have managed to creep his wildmen, so I've been stealing his creeps, and I'm stealing this one, and I will be building here. And really, you see that these Bjornings, they've completely shut down his creep. Um, progression on this side of the map and they've actually helped these swordsmen to creep here now at this point I am actually I've got some pikes out uh, to help creep and also in the case that he gets shelob or trolls and I've I'm not really sure what I was thinking here with the Bjornings as you see they do heal up quite fast so these were on half health earlier I think I was considering creeping here but decided to go back because he moved his army so far out from his base you do want to watch out for the towers especially with Bjornings um, so I don't want to get too close to the base whilst they're in bear form they're pretty good in human form against towers Hours, um, as I'll explain a little bit further later but just look at, at the damage that these Bjornings can do they do suffer a bit of damage and one thing you need to watch out for if you are going to use Bjornings if you use just one Bjorning it really really suffers from what we call trample deceleration so that means you run in to some units even if they are just orcs you run into them and they slow right down and this means that they can't really escape once they hit into a clump it's very hard to keep them running around the map and the orcs can actually get in quite a lot of flank damage and that's why a lot of people don't really rate Bjornings even against Mordor because if you have just one the trample deceleration slows them and almost traps them in the clump and then the orcs deal enough damage to kill them however if you get more than one whilst one is trampling and being decelerated another one comes in and tramples the orcs that are decelerating the first one and in that way the deceleration is very very highly reduced I was gonna say significantly there as well I stopped myself very highly reduced and so really they're more than double effective if you have two um, so it really kind of snowballs on itself. So here you see uh, Dud is not just sitting around in his base, he is regaining map control and he has taken the two farms here. Now, me in this situation, looking, looking back on it, I am harassing with the Bjorns here um, in bear mode, but actually looking back on it and seeing how this game plays out, I would have much prefer preferred if I was to do this game again, would be to bring these Bjorns back to his base and really go for look at this already he has got five orc bits and this is the specific strategy that i was talking about from dud and that strategy is orc spam orc spam orc spam he loves doing it i actually quite like playing against it because it is just fun killing all those orcs um and to really just to really uh, build up and if you let it if you let it get out of control it really does snowball out of control here we see he's going for a double pantry upgrade and he needs this let's have a quick look at um, his command point see that 630 he is quite uh, command point limited in this match here I'm trying to defend the farm and look at all these orcs it's very early in the game I've killed a lot of orcs already but he's just producing so much so many more of them all at once here I come in with the bears to try and deal a lot more damage because I was thinking um, at the time you know I managed to stave off the assault with of the orcs with the Be with the Bjornings in the early game. Look at all these orcs just melt from the Bjorning trample and I've actually got another one out. So in total I've got five now. I was thinking I'm going to be able to push him back now. But as you see he's got pikes and Bjornings, the trample revenge is very very dangerous against orcs and even against orc pikes it's super dangerous i just managed to, to let that one survive it is level five so that would have been a costly loss for me and another thing about the bjornings is they do level up very quickly against orcs and they only heal if they are past level one so they have to be level two at least and here we go here shelob that's the reason why i got pikes earlier but you see already 
Look at all these orcs pumping out and actually killing orcs in this game, which is something I realised after the game had finished and after I'd, I'd had more time playing against this strategy because this this was one of the first um, times I'd played against this strategy that Dud uses, was that actually killing orcs isn't that significant in this game. In almost any other matchup, killing units is so, so important because it stops the creeps, um, it stops the harassment, but in this game, although it, yes, you have to stop the harassment, and yes, you do have to kill stuff, obviously, I think it was, would, was much more important for me at that point, rather than to use these bears as I was before harassing here, I should have just gone for the base, because look at this, he's going to have double um, pantry here, and that is really significant. Now he's got 900 um, command points at, uh, of a total. So he's going to be filling up these now with these orc bits. What I should have done, in retrospect, look at all these orcs just completely, completely pushing me back. What I should have done, I should have grabbed those Bjorns and straight away I should have gone for a base rush. I should have destroyed his two farms here and even tried to destroy some of the orc barracks just to slow down this spam because really my biggest enemy in this match is the orc spam at the moment and i need to somehow stop it now killing orcs when you um and when you're just completely spamming them re uh, relentlessly, killing them doesn't really stop anything because you've got instant reinforcements from all of these orc pits. So you need to destroy buildings in the base rather than destroying orcs. Now, of course you need to destroy orcs, but it's more of a secondary thing. So definitely, in retrospect, I would have come in with these Bjorns and Bjorns in their human form. As you may be able to read if you pause the video here, they do very, very high damage to single targets and they um, either completely disregard or significantly reduce the armour of the enemies um, with their attacks. Um, and I think this includes buildings, so they're very effective against buildings. If only I had used these Bjorns in this match to go through and attack some of these buildings. At this point in the game, I would be looking to destroy these improved pantry buildings. Whereas a lot earlier in the game, I might have actually gone for one of these orc pits. Because if you have two orc pits and you destroy one of them, you've halved the amount of spam that is possible from this strategy. But... As I say, if you face this strategy, don't be afraid to go for a base rush. Sometimes people think base rushing is a little bit cheap or a bit of a cheese, but really, if somebody's going to go for this type of strategy, it's, it's all you can do against them. And if it turns out that base rushing is a little bit too powerful, then that's simply something that this mod has to look at and something that we have to consider as a community and change a little bit. If it's not overpowered, then it's perfectly fine to go for it. So I say, if you have the opportunity to base rush, go for the base rush. If it turns out, over the many games that we play together, that it turns out to be OP, then we can make that argument and we can ask the team to have a look at it. Anyway, moving on to this game specifically, I have got five Bjorns here. Uh, one of them is on low health, or a few of them are on low health, because once again of that trample revenge damage, and you see here now, it's beginning to snowball out of my control. Six orc barracks. I mean, come on. Really, as, as many orcs as I kill now, it's not going to matter so much. I have got a small army here. Uh, and let's have a look over at mine. I've got 700 command points, which is not too bad as Lorien, but let's have a look at Dud. 1,100 to um, possible, and 800 he's filled up of it. So here you see great army splitting by Dud. He's doing the creeping, which I could have done earlier, but decided against it. And he's also harassing my farm, so now I'm really losing my control on the map. And not only am I losing my control on the map, here you see the Bjorns. Uh, managing to stave off this creep, but will it be enough? I really highly doubt it at this point. Look at this, he's pushing through with more Orc Battalions, and as I said in the previous game, if you have watched it, and I do recommend it because this is somewhat of a part two to that video, or you, although you can watch them and get a lot out of them independently, um, that these Orcs can be so dangerous if you don't counter them properly because they just grab control of the entire map. We've got six Orc Barracks, they're leveling up. Every time they level up, um, they produce faster, as you see there. 20% faster level 2, 30% less faster level 3. If you have 6 level 3 orc barracks, there really is no stopping the incredibly fast spam from Mordor. And 
not only am I losing command points um, here by losing these farms, I'm also losing my um, resource production speed. And therefore, the more farms he destroys, the less likely I'm going to be able to get back into this game. And this is what I mean by Mordor starting to snowball out of control. Now, of course... When I had the opportunity to attack the base, which I have a lot less opportunity now because of the amount of towers he's got and the sim simply the amount of orcs that he has as well, I did actually decide, instead of doing that, to go for these buildings here. And they reduce the cost of heroes. They reduce, if you have three, by 30%. Now, heroes are very, very effective against um, a Mordor spam. Mainly, number one, orcs don't do a lot of damage. So you can reasonably um, keep hold of your heroes if you have good micromanagement and you have plenty of troops and cavalry defending them, as I do in this situation. Here we see Caleborn has come out as well. So I have gone for these hero um, reducing, hero cost reducing buildings and I've got Galadriel, as, as we've seen, she is excellent against Orc Spam. Because she does AoE damage, and as you see in this game, she must get, I mean, not exaggerating here, completely not exaggerating, she must get about 2,000 kills in this game. Look at this orc spam. This is something I have to cope with. And here we see, look at that, they just get melted by Galadriel. I've used my m mystical stream, and one sh Galadriel, un unaggressive, level 3, is one-shutting these orcs. So that's the reason why I went for her. Because I know she's so good against it. And she's going to kill so many orcs. But I've said it again in this video. And I'll say it again. It really is not the main thing that I need to be looking for in, in this game. Killing orcs. Because I can do that. I can easily do it. I actually focus the archers here. Because they're the ones that's doing the most damage at the moment. And as you see Gladriel just completely one-shotting these orcs. And she's only on level 5. Here's another problem with the heroes. And especially Gladriel. At level 3 she was one hitting orcs. So at level 10, she doesn't really have much of a boost. Whereas if you were playing against someone like Gondor, where she can't kill units at level 3 with one shot, but might be able to at level 10, those levels really do um, you know, benefit you in the long run. Whereas against Orcs, it doesn't really matter if she's level 3 or level 10. She's still going to do... She's still going to one-hit them. The only significant thing that she gets is um, her powers as she levels up. Now, here we see Celeborn. If you are going to go down the hero route of um, against Mordor, it's imperative that you get Celeborn and Galadriel, mainly because of Shelob. Shelob, as you see here, throws Galadriel. She can't move, and you need... Celeborn there to protect her. Also you need Celeborn there to protect her against Nazgul which can come in on their cavalry and really just focus down Galadriel and although she's an excellent hero she's got hardly any armor and she really can die if she gets focused down. Now Celeborn is a great hero killer so they're the perfect combination with each other husband and wife and this move here, Squall, is particularly good as it's kind of like a Mortal Kombat get over here kind of move where it pulls heroes towards him and he can just kill them in two or three shots. Now, in the meantime, Dud has been harassing all of my farms. It's really looking bad for me at this point. Six uh, Orc Barrack buildings here and as you see soon, I think he actually goes for an outpost and gets even more barracks. So... All, you know, I'm killing so many, so many orcs here. And you can tell this by the amount of um, power points I, I get. And here you, you hear the Bjorn starting to die. This is a problem, again, with so much spam. Is that when he's got relatively few units, another Bjorn goes down. When he's got relatively f few units, I can easily keep my Bjorns alive. Because they don't need to be constantly killing stuff. Whereas when he's got thousands of and thousands of orcs... On the field, here we see 1,000 command points worth of orcs. I really need to be killing stuff all the time with my Bjorns. And as I said before, they suffer quite a lot from uh, trample revenge damage. So if you're constantly um, having to kill stuff with them, they're not getting a chance to heal up. And therefore, they're much more likely to die. Here you see he's trying to get rid of Galadriel. But with the help of these troops and Celeborn, he doesn't manage it. And now here we see once again why heroes are good against orc spam. The level ups that they get are crazy. But... Here we go, once again, he's gone for the outpost, and it's just looking worse and worse for me all the time. Let's have a look at uh, Dud's PowerPoints, just for a moment. You see, he's got hardly any compared to me. Let's have a look at mine again. 
you know, these are tier three powers that I've got here, and I've completely filled out some of the other tiers. Um, of the powerpoints and I've got five in waiting so I am killing way way more than he is I am getting so many more powerpoints than he is I am getting so many more here so much more hero experience than he is and Bjorn experience and Unix experience but at this point it just doesn't matter his spam is too strong he's going for more orc bits can you believe it eight orc, orc bits altogether I think at this point and some people might think, looking back on it, that this is a little bit OP. I am going for Galadrium. They are very strong. Um, and the reason I'm going for this is they are a little bit more tanky than um, the Lorien unit. So after I've got out my heroes, I'm trying to transition into a Galadrium spam. But it's, as you see, it's going to be so hard. I really don't have enough money to do it. And Galadriel, level 8, she's doing so much for the team. But it's just not looking great for me at this point. So... Once again, eight orc, bar orc barracks, and you know, look at this. I'm killing them, and I'm killing them so uh, so many of them, but they just keep coming and coming. And here you see, he's really cementing his position on the map. So let's have a quick look at map control. I've got no map control whatsoever, and map control is so important in one v ones. I've just completely lost it to the orc spam because I didn't counter it effectively. And Dud is winning here. He's he's completely winning. It's almost GG at this point. Now, the only thing stopping me from uh, quitting this match and just giving the GG out is, number one, I'm getting plenty of power points. So I'm thinking to myself, I've nearly got the ship, which is extremely powerful for Lorien. So I can actually push back quite a bit. Um, but also, it's just fun. It's fun playing this mod. It's fun killing so many orcs with heroes. So... You know, although I'm losing quite terribly and quite embarrassingly, like any true noob would, it's just fun. So I carry on playing. Now, here we go. Already Galadriel level 10, and she's used her skill. If you don't know what this skill is, it gives all units around her invulnerability. Unfortunately, it doesn't give her invulnerability. So if you see this go off that your enemy has just used, you should instantly be thinking, can I kill Galadriel? I can no longer kill anything else around her, but can I kill Galadriel? And as you see here, Dud correctly targets her. A bit of miss micromanagement from me there, but I managed to pull her back before she suffers too much damage. And here comes some more Galadrim to try and push back Dud. Here are the Bjorns. Look how many Bjorns I've got. I think that's six there and there's a seventh one on the way. This is fully upgraded to level three now and really you do need Bjorns in my opinion against the Mordor spam but it's just not enough at this point. They're not going to kill enough just because the spam is too much. Um, I think if I was Dud now I'd probably be going for trolls or even some rams to try and get rid of this base here. So as you might have guessed, oh, here we go. Here's a little, here's a, a nice tactic which I should have used earlier. And the reason I did it like this was because I had the ship. Now, this is really, really quite good. You use the ship together with the Bjornings. And here, as I described before, the damage that they can do. And here you see the Citadel that are about to go down. In the previous game, you saw how trolls can destroy Citadels quite well. Bjorns really do high damage. And actually, looking back at it, I would have gone for these command points. Um, buildings if I had given it a second try. I went for the orc pits, but at this point I'm killing one of eight. If it was one of two orc pits, it would be more significant because he would have half the spam that he does. But at this point, I'm only getting rid of one eighth of the spam potential. So really, I should have been getting rid of these buildings here. If I'd gotten rid of these, he would have lost what is that? 360 command points? Um, possible command points worth. And that really would have slowed down his spam. By killing these orc pits, it's not really a big deal. He's got a thousand resources. He's just going to rebuild. So definitely a macro mistake there for me. And yeah, basically that is the story of this game. Macro mistakes from me where in the early game, I would say I was winning. And winning quite significantly thanks to the extremely early Bjorn and as I said earlier I don't recommend it in normal situations but I do actually recommend it against this style of play the orc spam which I knew Dud was going to go for because he always gets it and here he's not only producing orcs now he's going for a bit of an archer spam and the archers just really rip through my units while the orcs just completely tank everything else and here we are he's creeping He's not letting any of the map go to waste. He's grabbing buildings everywhere. And look at this. He's got 
defensive measures on his buildings just to really cement his position. I have managed to keep my Bjorn Hill alive for the time being, but I, I, I can't actually remember, but I highly doubt that that's going to last very much longer. Here I've had to turn the Bjorns back into bears to try and retreat them out of the base. Let's have a quick look at the damage here. I've destroyed three Orc Barracks. I've destroyed the Citadel. So that's what, 2,500 um, resources worth of damage. But it really, it is insignificant at this point. Um, he can just rebuild. He's got so much of the map. He's got enough income to re to rebuild everything, and it's just looking terrible for me right now. So just a quick mention on the powers that you should be going for against this kind of strategy. You want to go for any power that is anti-spam. So that includes the eagles. There, Galadriel goes flying, and all throughout this match, he there we go. That was the scroll. Just just as you saw there, Sheila went flying, and that was. Um, Kellerborn's level 7 ability. That's why he's so good in combination with Galadriel. If if Shelob comes or anyone else uh, like a Nazgul or the Mouth of Sauron come to try and kill Galadriel, you can just use that uh, from Kellerborn, pull them towards him and then just completely destroy them. Especially if you combine that with Tauriel. Now here you see he's really looking to kill my um, Bjorn Hut and when that goes down it really is GG. I mean to be honest with you it's GG already. He's already getting the siege works out and as you see once he's rebuilt this let's have a quick look at his resources yep once he's real bit rebuilt that he's got 1800 he's going to be able to easily replace these with orc barracks or even better with siege works now because what he really needs is um rams to just finish me off here and if i remember correctly i was a little bit annoyed with dud in this match um a little bit salty from me which is quite unusual but you know I'm human like everyone else, I do get salty sometimes. And I think I was saying, oh, you know, great spam, dude, you know, really clever. But at the end of the day, it's me who should have counted it. It may, it may potentially be OP, and if it is OP, then it's something that needs to be looked at by the team. But actually, in my opinion, this strategy is not OP. It's only overpowered if you abuse it. Talking about abusing overpowered stuff, and this shows my salt really in this game, I've just used Shining Arrow from Haldir, which is widely considered one of the most OP things in the game. And I think Dud does actually mention it in the chat, although I don't think you can see the chat in the replays. And he says, please don't use Haldir spam. And I kind of am embarrassed in myself by using it. And I just say, okay, sorry, man, uh, I won't be using it again. But really, if you watch my first video that I uploaded, it's somewhat of a how to play well against Mordor. Now, there was two quite different strategies. As as if you remember, he has gone for the uh, replacing them all with Orc Barracks. I wouldn't have actually done that, but, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with having more Orcs as Mordor. Um, anyway, back to my previous point. In the game against Dimitri, he did use a, a different strategy. He went for more of a troll-based um, game and only had one Orc Barrack, whereas Dud just goes all out. Here we go. Um, Galadriel using her invulnerability again will just help me survive a little bit longer. Dud really does just go for the Orc spam. And as I said, the previous video was a bit of a how to play well against a Mordor. This video really is a prime example of how not to play against Mordor. Now, that's not to say I didn't do some good things, like I think the early Bjorn start was excellent against this, but the thing that I missed, it was really just one or two or three opportunities much, much earlier in the game to just go with those Bjorns. I think I think very early in the game, I had four or five Bjorns. Now, four or five Bjorns against buildings can do huge damage to the buildings. So, really, that's what I should have done. Very early in the game, I should have completely shut him down. And this is what you need to do against the Orc Spam. You need to shut it down as early as you can. If you let it build up, it starts to spiral out of control. The more Orc Pits you have, the more command points you have, it gets to a point like it is now where, in fact, my micro um, in this game wasn't actually too bad. Um, I did manage to keep Galadriel alive, I think, for the whole game. I don't think she's actually died at this point. And I've got her to level 10. I've got my other heroes to level 10 without them dying. Um, maybe a bit of mismicro management from the Bjorns. But really, this was a game lost by me because of macro decisions that I made wrong. And not taking the opportunities that I made for myself. So, 
if you ever have the opportunity to fight against a player like Dud who loves to spam orcs, my recommendation would be don't actually worry too much about killing the orcs. Go for the command point buildings and if you also have the opportunity go for the barracks. Here you see I have gone for Mirkwood and at this point I'm thinking I need some kind of a hold on the map. I am I know I'm losing, I need to do something and because I've got no farms on the flanks I'm thinking I need to have some kind of a hold in the middle so I've gone for Mirkwood. Here we see more Bjorn's dying. These eagles by the way are excellent against um, the orc spam because of their AoE damage. Um, but really he's spamming out the the rams now and he is going for them in the base I just missed it but I think he went for um, some some more rams in the base this is a bit of a micro mistake by him and once again if anything Dud was making the micro mistakes in this match but he completely outplayed me on the macro front so therefore despite the fact that my micro was good and his was slightly worse it didn't really really didn't matter because the macro game had already been won by him so yes, this is how not to play against Mordor and it's only a matter of time now for him to keep spamming um, siege units, either trolls or catapults or rams and really it, it's a waiting game for him now. Just build up a whole load of rams, storm into my base and kill them. In the meanwhile, Galadriel is still slaughtering orcs. I look back at the statistics and... I think it was over 5,000 units that I killed with a kill to death ratio close to the 20s and it just doesn't matter. Against this against this style of play it does not matter how many units you kill. You've got to do damage elsewhere, you've got to do damage to the buildings. We had a Momo kill coming in there, um, obviously that will die to, you know, Lorien's defence is really quite good. Um, as you see all these orcs will die the only real thing that can damage my base are rams and catapults at this point so there's still this epic fight going on at the river and seeing, seeing that the game's over I think I might just spend most of my time just looking at this battle having a, a little look at uh, the micro from both sides and just see how long I can keep these units alive and I'm definitely not going to keep Galadriel alive when I run her to completely the wrong side of the battlefield what a noob um, although this is a great power if you're going for heroes as you if you can read here plus 75 percent armor for allied buildings and heroes so even though Gladiol is completely in the wrong position like the idiot that I am she's actually not going to die here because she's got plus 75 percent armor and that is significant Dud comes in with his own weather counter and that is darkness so he now has plus 50 percent armor and plus 50% damage all over the map and as you see the Gladrium have fallen to the orc spam and the heroes can really do not a lot else now they have to run I'm desperately trying to save Galadriel just to keep this match going as long as I can the gears of Galadriel once again another great power against any faction really um, and against Mordor as well and he still hasn't done much damage to my base but I'm not sure where he's storing his rams. If, if if it was me, I would be storing my rams somewhere. I'd be getting about 10 of them and just putting them in the base and getting rid of it. And some might think that that's a bit cheap. But actually, in my opinion, it's not cheap. Because if you can afford 10 rams in a 1v1, then your opponent hasn't played well and it's his own fault for letting you get to that position. In a team game maybe it's slightly different because one player can focus on getting say rams or trolls with hammers while the other players fight um, fight with units and then all of a sudden you can go for a base rush and instantly wipe out one of your teammates and you might see that in some team game uh, replays that I upload but in 1v1 I think it's reasonably okay to um, spam rams and destroy a base if your opponent allows you to do that. So again, let's have a quick look at this battle. I am I am getting more uh, power power to try and kill more orcs. And an, another excellent thing, if your opponent does this orc spam with archers and doesn't go for many pikes, an excellent thing is Radagast the Brown slay. Now he can't actually attack units directly. All he does is trample, and the trample is quite like Bjorn's. It's very, very high trample damage. Radagast also gets a heal, so if you've gone for the hero route, that can further keep your heroes alive. And here comes Shelob. I'm guessing that Dud is trying to get Galadriel, and there she goes flying off. 
Oh my god, she went flying right into the middle of the orcs. And let's see, will he use the web? If I was him, I'd be using the web now to trap Gladio. Look at her. She's getting onto red health. I'm probably thinking at this point I need to get red gas out to try and heal her. My other heroes are just about making it through. There we go. There's the web trap. You see it trapped. And what have I used? I've used the ship just in time and if you read a description if you don't play this game regularly you read a description they only suffer one percent damage and they're also healed so at this point he's not going to save Galadriel I've just about saved her and once again that is reasonably good micro from me but it just does not matter at this point you see he's already taken down one of my buildings with a few rams into the base here's one ram and even the orcs are doing reasonably well here because he's sending so many in all he needs to do now is clean up I'm dead. I'm just hanging on by the skin of my teeth, trying to have a bit of fun with the heroes. And really, it's all over by now. So, a bad macro game from me. A good macro game from um, Dud into about the mid game, I'd say, his macro game really started to pay off. And actually, would I recommend, if you were Mordor, to play as Dud plays? Uh, well, yes or no, really. I would say, if you're not confident look at this he's queued up 14 orc archers now that is just ridiculous in any other normal game queuing up that amount of units is is a bizarre decision because just think i mean 14 times 210 what is that that's like um 4000 more than 4000 worth of resources that you could be spending on anything else you could be pumping out heroes you could be upgrading your resources you could be getting upgrades on your units but as i said it doesn't matter that he's that he's making mistakes like this when the orc spam is so strong so i, I mean i keep getting distracted in this video and talking about other things but back to the previous point of would I recommend it? I would actually recommend it if you're not confident in your micro because as you see if your opponent doesn't correctly counter it y y the micro is quite uh, unimportant um, in this type of strategy but if you come up against a player who does know how to counter it who for example I think I've got a better idea of how to counter it than I did at the time that I played this game um, it, it actually won't really help you out and it's and it's much better to play the style of play that say Dimitri would play as Mordor or that um, other good players like Mogat or Firefly would play as Mordor uh, a much more traditional approach but if you're not used to playing this game if you just play it with your friends it's quite an easy style for Mordor to play a reasonably good game it's almost a bit of a cheese really and that's not to say it's OP. Uh, this look at these rams now. Here, here is what I was saying before, and this is now GG for me. The ram spam, the orc spam, it's unstoppable, for, unstoppable for me at this point. But as I was just about to say, for example, in StarCraft, there are cheeses. Um, I don't know how much you know about StarCraft, but um, say for example, Protoss has an excellent cheese, which is um, to use what they call cannons, and it's basically ta summonable towers that can hit ground and air units, and um, making um, cannons right outside your opponent's base, so they can't really move out of the base without being hit by cannons, and the idea is to make as many cannons as you can outside the base and completely shut down your opponent, that is a cheese, but it is not overpowered because if you know how to counter it, it's actually a bad decision from the Protoss player. And that essentially is what I believe this strategy is. It's a bit of a cheese. It works extremely well if the opponent doesn't counter it. But if the opponent does counter it, it is not the best strategy, in my opinion, as Mordor. So take from that what you will. Here I actually managed to almost destroy his outpost just as a last valiant um, attack um, to try and deal some kind of damage. But really it is hopeless in this game. I think Galadriel is actually still alive. I'm not sure she might have died once in this game. But uh, if not, she hasn't died at all. So that's how... That's another reason why she's so good against Orcs. But as I say... Heroes can't do it by themselves. They need units there. They need cavalry there, especially against Mordor. And yeah, that's basically it. That is the story of the game. Here you see um, the ram spam. And once again, a bit of a cheese. But 
it is not the best strategy if counted effectively. So there we have it. It's seconds from my death and a rather embarrassing defeat um, on my part. But not to take away from Dud, he is a very good player and I hope to play a lot more games with him. He showed me to be a complete noob in that game, as often happens with me. Um, and now just a little bit more discussion on some more um, details into this YouTube channel. So once again, as I said before, I'm still considering the possibility of, of a How to Adain series. Um, and I will be trying to switch up the factions a lot more than I have. This was somewhat of a two-part series, these first two videos. Um, specifically, how to play against Mordor and how not to play against Mordor. Although they weren't, it wasn't, f it wasn't formally that premise. It was more of an informal introduction to the channel and also a bit of how to counter certain playstyles. But I will be playing against different factions and as different factions. And one of the particular interesting factions that are one of my favourite and one of the most interesting to me is Imlardris. And I will be looking for quite a few um, releases of Imlardris because a lot of people say that they're underpowered. Some players say that they can be overpowered, but not many say that. Um, and I'll basically give a little description of what I think about them, how I like to play as them, and how you can actually win with Imlardris in a 1v1. So, thank you for watching. Um, I'm enjoying making these videos. I hope you're enjoying watching them, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.